Hey, so what I want to do is just quickly walk you through the two Roman exercises that we did. Um, this is my interpretation of what the professor wanted, where he just wanted us to return each one of these numbers in. I can also make it look a little bit better, but um, I'm going to run the program first just so you can see what the results to make sure that's what you actually want to accomplish, and then I'll walk you through the code. So right here, as soon as you open up the program, it says, hey, type in a number between 1 and 12. So I'm going to go ahead and type in 1, and it returns Roman number 1. If I type in 5, it returns 5. If I type in 12, it'll return 12. Uh, so let's see if we go outside of the range of 1 and 12. So say I'm going to type in 45. I have it looped so that it just sends back, sends you back out and have to type in something again. I type in 0. Again, sends you back out. Hey, you need to type in something. And the same thing for 13. So that's what the code does. Again, you can make your output look a lot better and do different things. But that's how I have the code running. So as you see, when you type in a number, it returns a Roman numeral equivalent. So we'll walk through the code real quick. And I'm actually going to walk you through this backwards so you see the functions and then you'll get to the final code. So we're actually start right down here with the range. The first thing that it's actually going to do is do a check. Actually, let me start in the main function so you can see the function get called. So in the, in, in the main function is where you actually call the, your first function. So it's going to say, hey, type in a number between 1 and 12. And that's what's going to show to the user. And then you're going to see in and you're going to put the um, user input into the variable x, which I have as a global variable so it can be accessed anywhere. So that's pretty much the first thing. So the first thing it does is uh, ask you to type in, or first it tells you uh, what to type in, you type it in, and then secondly it calls the range function. So let's go down to the range function. And what this does is just checks to make sure the number's within the range of what we want. So I wanna make sure when the user types something in, uh, number in is between one and 12. That's the only thing. So the type is int and it starts with I equals one. You don't want to start at zero because the user, you don't want the user to input zero. So it's going to check between one and 12. Again, we're using a array. So it starts at zero and goes up to 12. So it's going to be less than 13 and it's going to increment each time. And what we're doing right here is we're saying, Hey, if whatever the user types in, which is X, ever equals whatever um, numbers in that range, then go ahead and call the two Roman function, which is what the actual assignment was based on. If not, then just continue, continue to loop through. And then whenever you finish, return back here. So this is outside the loop and you can see the brackets. So this is inside the function, but outside of the actual loop because you don't want it to keep popping up like every single time. So that's how I have that. So it checks that. So once the use, once it goes through all the numbers and it finds out, hey, you did type in a five, that five is within the range. I'm now going to call out the two Roman function and it's going to go right here and type in the two Roman function. And so whenever the user types in something, it brings in that integer right here. It subtracts it by one. You're going to need to do that in order to line it up again because the array starts with zero. So if a user types in one, you want it to pull this, you want it to pull this first one, not to pull zero because it won't recognize zero. So you're going to do an X minus one and I just have it um, reassign the X function at the top. So now that X becomes a, um, the X essentially gives you the right number and then it returns Roman X. So whatever number you typed in, it just finds out where that is in the array and returns that number. So, I mean, it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple, but this is the code. Uh, I'll leave it on the screen so you can look at it for a second and you can pause the video, I guess, whenever you need to see the stuff, but that's how I got the function to work.